Whatever you choose for your background design, that's the one that you're gonna stick with and you're gonna use your menu examples. Now, like I said, some of these have much more spaces than 12. You do not have to make another menu, but you may wanna go back and reference those videos from last week so that you can um, come up with some more ideas or some different ideas that you'd want to do. I'm going to start just on this one so that I can show you how we're gonna transfer our patterns into our design. I'm starting with this one because there's some smaller spaces, uh, whereas this one, all the spaces are pretty large, just so you're not sitting here watching me do a gigantic space. So when you decide to transfer them over, you're gonna be doing the same exact thing that you did when you were looking at the video and transferring it onto your menu, except this time you're taking it from your menu and you're transferring it onto your paper. So instead of them all being in perfect squares this time, you're going to have to figure out how to manipulate that pattern so it fills up your entire space. So for example, if I were to start with this from my menu, I would start with my marker, I did not use a ruler when I did it on here, but since these spaces are bigger, I am gonna use a ruler this time, and I'm gonna start with one of these medium spaces. If I started with that one, you'd be here all afternoon watching me do the same space. So I'm just gonna use my ruler, line it up, and draw my lines. Remember, since it's not a square shape anymore, it might be a little funky looking um, a little different than what you maybe expected it to look like. So you might have to get creative. Like this spiral, for example, fits perfectly in this box. However, would a spiral fit in a long skinny place? Maybe not, you might have to think about changing that. Maybe we'll do that one for the next example, just so you can see how you can alter your menu pattern to work for you. Okay, so I've used my ruler so that I can get those nice straight lines. And then for the shorter ones, I'm not gonna use my ruler. It's easier for me just to do them freehand. And like I said, I'm gonna be using black for all of these examples. It's up to you if you wanted to use a color. However, the thinner your pen, the easier it's going to be for you. If you're using a big fat marker for these, you're gonna notice that the ink is bleeding together. It's gonna to be much more difficult for you to get those sharp points. Part of Zen Tangles, you may have noticed, is they don't come out perfectly the way you want them to. Um, so the smaller the, the smaller the writing utensil you're using, the smaller your mess ups will be. And um, we all mess up. And that's, you know, part of, part of it. Like I messed up here already. I kind of go over my lines a lot. I tend to, to crisscross my lines a little more than I should. But when it's all done, because there's so much going on in the picture, no one sees those little mess ups. Nobody probably except you will see those tiny little mess ups. You know, if you accidentally draw the line the wrong way, don't get frustrated, just keep going and keep doing it correctly on the rest of it. And you probably won't even see that one spot or it's a Zen tangle. There's no real rule, change your pattern and just make it work. So that's how I'm filling that space there. You'll notice the closer your lines are together, the darker it will look so your value will be darker. The further they are spread apart, the lighter it will look. That also goes for thick and thin. So you can see this box looks a lot darker than this box because there's a lot more lines in it. This box looks a lot darker because I used a thick marker instead of the thin marker. All right, so we were talking about that maybe using the spiral one next. We said it fits nicely in a box because a spiral is round, but how would it work in a rectangle? Let's try it out. So I'm going to use just my regular size marker this time. You can absolutely use pencil first if you want to. Um, I find that I like to use pencil first on the ones that I'm not sure of. I messed up on this the first time when I was trying to do this one. I, like this was supposed to be that, but I messed it up and I messed it up pr pretty bad. So then I just added stripes in it and outlined the mess up lines darker and now it doesn't look like I messed up at all. It looks like I did that totally on purpose. So, you know, you can always just kind of make it work for you however it works. So I'm gonna add the spiral here. Now, since I'm filling my box, if I do that, it's not gonna fill up the whole space. And my job to do the centangle is to complete the space. I can repeat spirals next to it, or you can get creative with your spirals or change your design, however you wanna do it. So I'm gonna add one this way now. 
and then I'm gonna add one this way. So do you see how that fills the whole space now with spirals? You're taking one concept and then filling the whole space. Then after I do that, of course, I would go back in and I would spend time adding the details. Now I am not gonna make you watch me do this entire thing with the details. And this one might look pretty tricky for some of you. And I thought it was gonna be difficult at first, but I realized it's just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's all I was doing was four lines. So, you know what, I'm gonna add another shape in here cause I don't like how big this is. So this is what I mean about making the space work for you. That kind of divvies up my space a little. So I'm just making curved lines like a C backwards. One, two, three, four, it's that simple. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can see what I mean about repetition. Repeating is part of making a pattern. And if you're not using repetition, you're not gonna be creating a pattern, which means you're not gonna be having your Zentangle inspiration design uh, work out properly. So I'm gonna stop on this one for now. I'll go back to it later. I just wanted you to be able to see how you could fill up the entire space, even if your shape wasn't one that looked like it should fit there. Okay, let's move on to a different design one, one that doesn't have just circles in it, or I'm sorry, just uh, rectangles and squares in it so that you can kind of see how they fit in other types of shapes. Ooh, let's work on my flower. I like how this one came out. So if you're doing something that has a plan, you don't have to put a different pattern in every single space. You might choose that you want all of your flower petals to be this design. So you could put this design here, 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 and here. And then maybe you would put this design here, 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 here. So it's up to you. You can reuse it over and over again. I, the only thing I don't suggest is reusing it right next to it because then you're not going to be noticing that there's different spaces. So on the leaf here, if I did the same design in each of these spaces, you wouldn't tell that they were different spaces. If you're doing something like that, you might want to think about using two designs that look similar but are not the same. That'll give you some interesting contrast, um, whereas like these two are very different. You might want to pick two that are the same if you want it to look similar, but not the same. So for this one, you'd be doing the same exact thing we did on the last one. You would choose a design that you wanted to put somewhere and then add it in. Again, it's going to be very different trying to transfer your menu box onto a space that does not have squares. This one has no squares or rectangles. So I wanted to show you one that has a little more of an organic shape to it. Uh, I'm going to add this design into here. Now this design was first built by adding a grid, like a checkerboard on the back of it and then adding that space in between. Since I can't do that way, I'm going to separate it this way. I'm using my medium marker and then I think I'm just going to leave it like that. So instead of doing them all, I'm just gonna pretend like it's one row of that design and I'm gonna alternate the direction that they go in. So I have one going this way. So I'm using my inspiration from my menu, even if I couldn't copy it exactly. And that's what I wanna show you in this video. So today, like I said, you're not doing your entire thing. That would be absolutely insanity. I think your hand would fall off and you'd probably be dizzy or cross-eyed by the time you were done. I know that when I was working on my menus, I had to take a couple breaks because my eyes were going a little nuts. You kind of get an op art effect. Uh, if you're doing a really good job on your Zentangles, it'll start looking like op art, optical illusion art. We learned about that in second grade. So you can see here how this is filling in this space, even though it's a different shape than my menu. 
I really like how that looks. Then you can do anything. It's up to you. Choose another one. Go on to another space. I'm only going to do one more on this one um, before I close out this lesson and let you guys work on your own. Since this is a sunflower, I think I'm going to make one that looks like seeds, but I don't really see one on my menu that I like. But I remember from the video, there was one that used circles that were medium and small and touched together and then filled in the background black. And I saw that on a lot of your menus also. So I'm gonna take some inspiration from you and from the video and add one that's not on my design. Now, last week, I told you that you could invent your own Zentangles. And some of you tried that and some of you came up with some like super amazing, awesome stuff. Um, I told Desiree Ham I like wanna steal one of her designs. I think I'm gonna go back and look at her submission and borrow one of her designs because she came up with so, some really cool ones that I don't remember even seeing in the video. So you can get your inspiration from anywhere to start filling this in. Today, I want you to get it about halfway done. Okay, you can be a little less than half because this video is a little long, but I want you to get it about halfway done so that I can see where you're going, but not do so much that if something needs to be changed, um, you, have to, you don't have to restart everything all from the beginning. So you wanna get about halfway done. You're gonna submit the picture in Google Classroom so that we can talk about it. Remember, your design can be anything, but you want to compose your space. No little itty bitty mini designs. Actually, as we've been talking, I've been thinking about this when I said I wasn't sure what I was gonna do, whether I was gonna leave it white, whether I was gonna cut it out. Um, I actually think it would look really cool if I did it like rays of the sun coming out. So I'll have some more areas. And then I was thinking, oh, this would look really cool in color Zentangles. So if you have some colored Sharpies at home, you could use those. So I was thinking, oh, I could do color on the inside and then on the outside spaces, I could do it in black and white. And that would be like a cool contrast. So it's up to you how you design yours, whether you do all black and white, whether you do some color, whether you do both. Yeah, I like that. Um, and it's up to you how, how you make that work. So the first thing I want you to do today is draw your design, make sure that you trace it in a black marker, I suggest a thick black marker, like a Crayola marker or a thick Sharpie if you have one. Um, then you're gonna take your menus from last week and get it to, you know, I'm gonna change it. You don't have to do half. Let's say do six spaces. That might be different for everybody. So I'm gonna give you a break this week because your design might take you a long time. Let's do six spaces some that are large and some that are small. So don't turn it into me and be like, I did this one and this one and this one and this one. No, like pick some big ones and pick some small ones. Submit it to me in Google Classroom under your, um, your Zentangle design part one. Then next week we'll do some more and we'll have a Zentangle design part two. And then during your flex week, you'll have time to wrap it up and it will be finished Zentangle design. So I hope those directions for this were pretty clear. I know that there's a lot going on and I know that I threw a lot of options at you, um, but just remember, you can search on Google. The options are endless. A lot of you have been choosing things like Baby Yoda to draw from Art for Kids Hub. That could be your outline, right? You could do a Minecraft character and that could be your abstract design that you start filling with Zentangles. A lot of them I've seen are like girls with like this crazy flowing hair, which I don't have crazy flowing hair. Um, I have straight hair, but that could be your design. Cupcake icing, ice cream cones, anything you want can be your design. It can be as simple as overlapping shapes and lines or as difficult as creating a drawing or something I have not even thought of because it's coming out of your brain since you are the artist. So take that, I want you to run with those ideas. You are creating your drawing and you're filling six spaces, six, 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 some big, some small. Turn it in in Google Classroom. We'll continue working on it next week. All right, I can't wait to see these. I'm so excited to see how they turn out. From the looks of your menus, I think this is gonna be like 
the most amazing project ever. All right, bye everybody.